All right, uh, call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. Uh, pledge, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call. Commissioner, oops, Commissioner Davis. Here. Vice Chair Biani. Here. Chair Tombe. Here. Commissioner Stanick. Here. Commissioner Wilson. Here. All right, uh, first up we have approval of minutes for April 5th, 2018. I move to approve the minutes of April 2000. I'm sorry, <laughs> April 2018. <laughs> All right, we'll go to a vote. I second. I second. <laughs> All right, motion to approve the April uh, 2018 meeting minutes passes unanimously. Um, next, we have ceremonial matters and presentations. For all of the people in the audience, if you have a comment, please submit it via a blue card. <laughs> uh, first up, we have our CIP uh, presentation, which is very exciting. Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, Tim, Tim Borden, Director of Public Works. Um, very glad to be here tonight. Uh, this is this is our annual preview of what uh, we want to sh share with you what we propose to include in the the um, annual um, capital improvement program in the budget that will be presented to council and a study session um, actually next week so um, uh, this will be uh, this will be your preview we're going to focus on uh, recreation community services types of projects anything that that will be in that realm is what we'd like to talk about tonight so I'm just going to lead you through some slides and, and we can wait till the end or you can stop me at any time as well. So feel free. First, just a, a, a quick note on some of the uh, things that we completed this year. I uh, always like to start off, uh, start off with that. So we did finish some, some accessibility improvements at Jo Jollyman and Varian Parks. Uh, those were a um, long time coming, we're, we're especially on uh, Jollyman working with some uh, of the seniors that are out there. Um, finding ways that they, you know, they do spend a lot of time out there. So finding ways to make sure that their um, they get their their recreation and and you know, what they do there at the at the park accommodated. Um, the international cricket uh, ground, um, the feasibility study we did finish that. The the McClellan Ranch Community Garden improvement. So we did go through the uh, conceptual planning and design. A lot of these the the commission has been a big part of. Um, the senior center walkway replacement that just finished uh, um, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the sports center upgrades, um, the East Tennis Court um, light replacement. So that was um, an efficiency project, but I think it is well, uh, better lit now with the LED lighting. And then uh, the tennis court resurfacing that really finished a several year effort. Um, first at the sports center and then at all of our other uh, parks that have sports courts, uh, or tennis courts, the, the resurfacing of those. And I think those, those have turned out very nice. Um, projects that, that haven't completed but met significant milestones uh, this year. McClellan uh, Ranch West parking lot improvement. So that, you know, we, we got through um, that design. Now we're really just waiting for nesting season to, to be done. So we have a start planned this fall. Um, so we are ready to, to move on that. Uh, the Sports Center LED message sign, and that is complete through the uh, construction documents. We did uh, actually bid that project, um, did not receive um, a good bid. Well, we actually didn't receive responsible bids. So we need, we're, we're rebidding it with uh, different license, construction licensing requirements. So we think that we'll we get better bidders, better bids, um, and we'll be doing that very shortly. Uh, newly proposed projects. So these are the ones that that will be presented um, in the in the council package uh, at the study session. So we'll start off with um, and, I, and th this is just a list here. I'm going to go into these in more detail. But Blackberry Farm entrance uh, road improvements, a feasibility study. Now I, I just pause for a second uh, to note that a lot of the way I'm going to go through the criteria for how we develop uh, CIP projects. But one thing that we do. 
uh, do is, is follow a theme of following our master plans. So we do a lot of master plans, conceptual studies, and once those are complete, that really paves the way for how we're going to strategize and, and prioritize our capital improvement program. So for example, you know, McClellan uh, uh, Ranch Preserve, when we finished that master plan, you know, that, that turned into the Environmental Education Center, the black, Blackfish Shop, and, and, you know, and other improvements. And we still have other improvements to do there. But that did, you know, we, we wanted the master plan to be complete to make sure that the, 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 um, all the stakeholders in the community were, were comfortable with where everything was going to be situated before we built something that was going to end up being torn down or a throwaway. We, did, we never want to do that. So that's kind of the theme, is we do these master plans and then we follow on. So right now in, in, in recreation and community services, you know, we're doing the citywide master plan. So, you, so we anticipate that that will be the, the next major theme, is building a lot of the projects that come out of that once it's approved. Um, right now, the theme that, we're, that you'll see when you, you won't see it so much tonight um, in, in this part of the CIP, but last year and this year, we, you know, we finished a major um, uh, bicycle and pedestrian master plan. So we've really been focusing on, on, on funding and getting those projects out in that, that master plan implemented. And like I said, we expect the next, the next, next big, big wave will be recreation and community services projects. Um, so to continue here, Lawrence Mitty uh, Park Master Plan, just anticipating and being optimistic that we're going to uh, be able to acquire that property and it will be able to be a next, um, you know, those steps will happen. The next step would be a mas uh, doing the master plan. So we're putting in funding for the master plan this coming year, again, optimistically that that, that will happen. Uh, McClellan Ranch Preserve Community Garden Improvements. So that is the construction. We just finished the, the master plan, if you will, and this would be the construction. Uh, McClellan Ranch Preserve Environmental Education Center Aquatic Habitat. So that's been talked about some, and, and here it is where, where we are proposing that for next year as well. Uh, unfunded projects. So, so through the years, we, we uh, you know, actually established a fairly long list of projects that we know that someday we're going to want to do. Maybe at one time they were, they, they were of great interest, and, but they never got implemented, never got funded. We don't want to completely lose that thought. So within our CIP, we do carry a list of, of projects that, so people know that, that you know, at, at some point that those may be elevated, they may be prioritized. You know, we, even though it's on the unfunded list, we may be applying for grants here or there, and if we get a grant, all of a sudden it has a very high priority. So, so we do carry this unfunded project list. Uh, this is our general, general uh, prioritization criteria. So the, the categories are um, you know, public safety, uh, whether it's a regulatory mandate that we're told we have to do it, or, or a grant commitment. Those are you know, really of the highest priority. Um, next is preventative maintenance, resource, and cost efficiency. So if we invest a little now to save more later, um, that's really that. That's the, the goal there. And then the next is enhancement. Just making, the, you know, the, and, and fortunately in Cupertino, we do a lot of enhancement. So, so we make the, the quality of life better. And that's really what the, the mark is there. Uh, the priorities are, um, our priority one uh, is ongoing and imminent. Um, projects that are already budgeted, so that is our, our top priority within those categories. Um, second is funded to, to start in this year, but it's contingent on uh, resources being available um, for the priority one project. So, you know, functionally, there's not a lot of difference between one and two. We're going to try and do all of one and two. Um, three is it's funded, but it's contingent on resources available or a master plan being complete. Um, and then uh, the fourth is a planned project that is in the out years. We just we know that we're, something has to happen first for it to, to be ready, and, and so we've just kind of parked it in, into the out years. So category one, and these are the new projects um, proposed for uh, next year. So I, I mentioned Blackberry Farm entrance road improvements. So this is um, with the acquisition of the, of the Seifert prof property. This is you know, doing just what we anticipated doing when we got that property, is looking to see now what we can do to, to make it a, a safer and, um, a, and an easier path for bikes, pedestrians, all modes of travel to get down that driveway into, into the park. 
Um, so that feasibility study will, you know, we anticipate kicking that off as soon as funding is available, you know, probably later this summer. Again, go, go ahead with any questions that, that may come up. Uh, Lawrence Mini Park, again, this is our optimism here. Um, it, so it, if we do acquire that property, go through the annexation process, we would immediately want to go into a, um, a, a master planning process. This $100,000 that we're showing here is the, just a, a $100,000 carve out of the Apple uh, funding that was, that was put in place for this project. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, McClellan Ranch Preserve, a community garden. So that's just implementing what we've gone through a very good uh, stakeholder process for and, um, and actually going in and redoing the entire garden. McClellan Ranch Preserve, uh, the aquatic ha habitat, uh, same, same thing. We know where that's going to be. We, we know, you know, there's not a master plan that's going to come around that's going to be in conflict with that. It's a good project. Let's let's go do it. Um, as far as let me just speak to to one thing because I think it's it's of note here, and if no one's going to ask it, I'll ask it for you. Why is is building an aquatic habitat one hundred twenty five thousand dollars? So 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 that is a lot of money. But but when we publish these numbers, let me let me talk about what is included. So, so that is, yes, it is the con construction estimate, but we really don't know what, that, what we're estimating. We don't know what the design is. We don't know how big it is. Um, and what has to be included in, in it is, is any um, CEQA analysis, all, all the design costs, all of the construction management or the, or the inspection cost, any testing that, that's necessary. Um, the administ you know, the, basically the, the administrative costs, the ho home office charges that come with any project that any, any private or public company does in the world. Um, and then um, also included in here is a, a big chunk of this is accessibility improvements. So we can build it, but we are required to make sure that anyone can be able to access this area. And that is going to cost a little bit of money here. I think this is probably as much as the habitat itself is, is getting people safely and comfortably to the, to the facility. And then on, to, on top of all that, um, you know, that comes into a pretty healthy number. But because we don't know um, exactly what that design is going to be, we don't know what we might, you know, if we find any surprises through construction, we put a bunch of contingencies on until, until we have it designed. So we call it the cone of the unknown. And when we don't know a lot, our contingencies are wide. We, we put 25, 30% in design and construction contingency. So that, that really puts it up uh, you know, to a, a much higher number. As we go through the process, then we, we know a lot of things. And that, that cone gets narrower. And so our contingencies, we reduce those as well. So a lot of times, we do return money ultimately to the, to the budget, to the general fund. But, it's, but, but until we know some things, we, we do um, estimate what usually ends up to be high. Not always, but it usually end up, ends up um, being high because we put these contingencies in. Um, in regards to, to that, I'm, I'm a big believer in under promise over deliver, or in this exactly. case, over budget, under bu uh, come out under budget. So, right. so I think that that makes um, complete sense. I am uh, just curious, though, when we actually designed the um, Environmental Education Center, didn't we already make it um, ADA compliant? Yeah, the, the the center itself is, but to get to where the habitat would, would be, be would, would be okay. some additional path pathing okay. that's that's necessary. Um, and the other question I had was actually uh, around the Blackberry Farm ent uh, entrance road improvement. Sure. Uh, you mentioned that might be taking place during summer. How long will that take, and do you think it's going to impact any of our summer programming? No. Well, this will just be the study. The study. So, okay. so, so we anticipate, okay. uh, you know, just. I got all excited for a second. Uh, right. <laughs> well, I, I would too. Okay. But, but yeah, we're anticipating but that this this is going to be a challenging project. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not sure if you're going to end up having a. Um, kind of a planked walkway that, that's going to have, you know, that's going to be almost a bridge over some areas because we mm -hmm. just, there's not a lot of widening that it can yeah. occur. Mm -hmm. so, so this is why we want to be able to have some idea. Sometimes we, we, there's so little that we know that we first want to do a feasibility study, yeah. and that's that a case sense. here. Yeah. I, I have a quick question. I was just wondering, going back to the um, aquatic areas, yeah. uh, do you know where that would be on the site, or is that part of the planning process? 
Uh, my understanding is that it is just on the on the end of the um, uh, of the um, environmental education center as you go towards towards the 4-H area. Right, okay. is that yeah, that's because okay. I've talked to Barbara about that in the past. So I, right. was I think at one to time to Rotary was, was interested in it as well, and I think okay. it's the same location that they were thinking okay. about. Okay, thank you. I, and I have one too. Um, so sorry, <laughs> since okay, you said ahead. you have any questions, I guess <laughs> we do. Um, uh, so the, uh, mine refers to the uh, community gardens, which I know we had already finished the study. So this big number, 1.5, is that a bid number? So that we've already finished the study and we put that out to bid, and that's what we found. It will cost us to do what we. No, the, so no. so that that is that has, also a big big number to over that has a over lot of budget contingen under deliver? Exactly, <laughs> that still has a lot of contingencies in it. Yeah, so, so we so think it might cost us. Right. So that is that's hopefully on the on the very high end. We always we always hope that these numbers end up being very high and we can over deliver. But uh, but yeah, that that this is not anywhere near a bid number at this point. Okay. Okay. So one of my comment, uh, questions was about the aquatic habitat. Um, are we including the safety of the fish in the pond uh, because? Somewhere I saw that people have this fish and they are being attacked by, you know, birds, prey, and then they can't maintain it uh, because of safety and they have to close it. So I hope there is a somewhere in the design that there is some kind of protection so that right. they can survive. And this so, so this good. this is uh, that's a great question. So this is a case where you know Public Works we we wouldn't know anything to, uh, about that, but that's why we have the Barbara Banfields and such that they can help us through that. I mean we wouldn't we wouldn't build something like that specific without a lot of stakeholder help and assistance. Yeah, because some of the koi ponds have been closed right. because no, they, there are no more fish left in there. Right. <laughs> so. Right. I have um, some happy raccoons in my backyard. Uh, <laughs> a lot of yeah, yeah some kind of pr protective netting yeah. or whatever. Um, in the feasibility study, now that you mentioned the cost, is that seventy-five thousand for the blackberry farm entrance just the feasibility study cost? That's just the feasibility stu study cost. No, so we'll, we'll do a what uh, it's called a request for proposals. Um, we'll 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 get out to some of the consultants that have done work for us in the in the in the past. Um, civil engineering, landscape architecture, and they will give us proposals. And, and again, hopefully it will be less than that, but that was just our, you know, no, uh, using our judgment as to what that type of work normally will cost. That's what we put in the budget. And uh, for the Lawrence Mitty uh, master plan, the, it mentions a neighborhood park at that location if we acquire that property. I thought we all were talking about that there's not much, when we visited this particular project, if we do acquire it, it would be more like a trail and not a park. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's an excellent point. That, that, that probably is worth some clarification. And we talk about the underserved, it's underserved for neighborhood parks and, and yeah, we don't, that's why we're gonna do a master planning process is okay. we, don't, we don't know what it will be. So that, no, okay. that's, a good, that's a good clarification, I'll, I'll get that. And for the uh, community garden, uh, the project estimated cost, it would be nice to see what kind of a breakup is, where the majority of the spending is uh, in this project. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have that tonight, but, yeah. uh, but we can try and get that to you. Yeah, yeah and, and again, in, in that is not only is all those things that, that uh, I talked about that are included in any budget, but, but you have um, accessibility uh, is going to be a big deal down into the garden as well. Um, we're going to be re redoing all the fencing, all the irrigation, all that. But, but accessibility, um, you'd be surprised how much that plays into a lot of these projects and becomes a, as big a number as, as some of the, you know, the things that you'll see at the end of the day. So, okay. Yeah, thank you. Those are any good, other, good comments. Any other questions? Be back on this section? Okay. We can move on to Category 2. Okay, let's see, I think it, there, yeah, category two. Okay, so this is the uh, Parks and Recreation Master Plan uh, uh, CEQA analysis. So this is just putting, this is really just a, more of a budget action. This is just continuing um, the master plan and some CEQA, additional CEQA analysis that was identified that, that is necessary to be rolled into the budget. So this is just asking for some more money on top of the on top of that budget to complete the the CEQA analysis. 
uh, sports center upgrades. So there's, there's um, actually, it doesn't detail it out. Uh, yeah, here we go. It does detail it out. So there's, there's really three or four projects, four projects, I guess, that, um, that we're looking at, including, and we're, we're hopefully going to be able to, to do all four of them at, at once. Really, it'd be much less disruptive if we can do them all. Um, renovate the second floor restrooms, renovate the women's locker room and shower, uh, the men's locker room and shower, and then renovate the front uh, lobby counter. Okay, and then uh, the um, Stevens Creek corridor uh, park chain master plan and from McClellan to Stevens Creek Boulevard. And, uh, and this is the follow on project um, from the uh, citywide master plan. So really it's, it, these are gonna be in series. And so as the, as the citywide um, plan is completed, then I imagine that this, this one would take off from there. Okay, and these are and these are existing projects that ha, you know they haven't been started yet, but uh, but they are completely funded. Money is just carrying over. So this is the inclusive play area. Uh, we don't we don't have a location for this, but you know there's a lot of projects where there is that that are very attractive for grant funding, and you know there this one specifically has has uh, grant funding that we hope to be part of it, but but. To be eligible and to be w very well um, qualified for grants, a lot of times you have to have a, a design or a, a, a you know a thought process, a community process um, ready to go. So that's what this would do: is is it would prepare us to be ready to, to go get other people's money. I have a quick question about that grant. Sure. So mm -hmm. the ten thousand or ten million countywide for such facilities, when that ten million's gone, that's it. So like if another city gets in and or a, a few other cities get in there and get that grant money before us, then and it's gone, like after 10 million, or how does that work? Um, I think I can, can answer that. Jeff Melkis, Director of Recreation Community Services. Um, in working with the county, we've made, um, we uh, have made them very aware, uh, the county, the supervisor, and, and the others involved, that Cupertino does want to be a player, does want to be part of that process, but that when the initial grant applications became initially due, that we didn't have a shovel-ready project yet on the books, and they had divided up their process into two Grant, independent grant processes. The first one is done. The second one, I believe, is still probably coming in the fall. Um, we don't know exactly. That's more of a, of a guess, but we know it's coming in the future. Uh, we are now with a draft copy of the um, of the feasibility study for the all-inclusive playground, and we'll be bringing that to you probably next month is my hope. Uh, we're working with the consultant to, you know, make some some changes and things in there that we'd like to see. Uh, at that point, then we will be ready to apply for 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 those grants. There's also another arm of fundraising that'll take place as a result of having this study. Okay, great, thanks. Actually, I had I was wondering. It says planning, so the feasibility is already done, or is in the almost completion phase and the planning would be actually a full plan of the park before we apply for the grant? There will be some uh, concepts, concept information that we get, but not construction documents per se. So we'll have general ideas that we'll bring to you that'll include prioritized locations, criteria on where, where we you know, would recommend a location based on a number of different things. And we'll bring that to you to help make those decisions. But so, would, it, would it also include what the park, uh, some idea of what it would look like, what the inclusive play area would look like? Um, well, specifically, you'll see pictures, I believe, of each of the different elements that'll go okay. into the inclusive playground. What the actual design will, will that'll take place as we, as we move forward with the project because we'll need to ensure that things fit in the right location. Uh, one of the criteria is, is parking, uh, restrooms, do we need to build more? So we, we're, we're just a little premature. This project doesn't get us there, but it does get us a long way down the road. Okay, so let me ask then, the, what the cost of 30,000, what will it, will it include everything that you just said? 
Yes, and, okay. and some initial um, documents that help us with the grant process. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Lawrence Mitty Park, so this would be the follow-on. We do the, the outreach, all, all of the, the community work, come up with a master plan. This would actually take the rest of the Apple money and, and put it towards building, building that goal. McClellan Ranch, uh, uh, this is the trash enclosure. Uh, it can be unsightly and it can also be um, an attraction for people that, that are trying to um, unload some, some trash uh, um, cost free. So, so this will be screening the, the containers. We've worked with uh, Recology and, and come up with a good plan here. Um, the, the good thing here is I think that the plan we came up with is, is um, not the full scope that we originally thought it was going to be, so we'll probably come in way under budget on this one, but still achieve the goal. Uh, McClellan Ranch uh, parking lot, so we've been working on that for a while. I think that we, you know, we just missed the, the window of opportunity to build it this, this, uh, this spring, but now we will be ready in the fall. And when I say we will, let me let me uh, let me get let me let me give give that a little bit just just a little bit of a pullback. The only thing that uh, in, in our construction world right now, it, it's very challenging to get good um, bids and good bidders. So so we're doing everything we can to get our plans out there, get get them very uh, well publicized when we're putting them out. But we still there's projects where we've still gotten one. Uh, two or zero bidders. So, so you know, something like this, we we fully are ready to go forward. They're budgeted. They're you know, we have good plans, um, but it's still a matter of getting someone that wants to build it for us. So, so right now that is a little bit uh, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, recreation facilities. Uh, uh, monument signs. So this is this is taking the the signage master plan and going in and doing. Uh, I think we had some yeah locations in McClellan Ranch Preserve, McClellan uh, Ranch West, Blackberry Farm, Memorial Park, and the Sports Center. Oh oh oh! I did I did okay yeah thank you. Um, so the. A lot of, uh, you know, again, following that theme that I talked about at the beginning, when the citywide um, park plan is finished, then we're going to be drilling down on a lot of, a lot of our neighborhood, uh, regional and, and neighborhood parks. So Memorial will probably be the first one. So, so now we've done some very macro planning citywide for what's, what's needed, what's desired by the community um, in all of our parks. Now we're going we're gonna to drill in and say, okay, it needs to have a restroom here. It needs to have a tennis court here, you know, whatever it is. So, so with Memorial Park, we know that that is you know, really the most popular, most uh, frequently used park in the city. So that's, you know, it makes sense that we'd start there. We also we know that we have some empty ponds that, that are an eyesore. So that's another reason, a good, good reason to start off there. Senior Center Repairs, um, so this is just doing some, really some acoustical panels in the, in the, in the ballroom. Um, and, and again, the, the, we, there's not a lot of unknowns there, so we're hoping that that will come in uh, significantly bef below that, uh, that cost. Uh, Stevens Creek Bank Repair, and this is, this is near, um, you probably heard us talk about the Blesh House that we purchased right there between um, between Stockelmeyer and and the golf course, so so this is going in at the creek there. There has been some undercutting of the of the bank, so going in and doing some some stabilization um, that that will also be in concert with the the habitat that we've put in place at the rest of the creek. Quick is it something that you could get grant money for? Yeah, it, yes, very good question. So so we we will we'll be um, talking to the water district and other you know partners to see if we can we can um, get some other funding for this as well and so all these when these budget numbers do anticipate you know, that when we're in at least the construction ones anticipate all city funding but we are actively out there trying to to use as as much grant funding as possible and this this is a good one Okay, and then going to the unfunded projects list, and I'll just quickly go through those. Um, we don't 
have costs for them because we really there's really not a scope of what what it would be in most instances but but uh, we have the implementation in a lot of our studies so here we you know we go through and we um, do our feasibility study for the um, the um, for San Fernando down to Blackberry Farm this would be I mean, we have a placeholder for implementing it um, the golf course renovation that's been in there for some time uh, really pending the the city citywide master plan to see what's what's to become of it um, the Blackberry Farm play area improvements going and that's just really going in and freshening that up um, tan bark replacing the the surfacing um, and then uh, and and it says install three par parkour type exercise stations. Understand that all these all these projects would come through this process, uh, you know, very intense um, outreach process. So we don't know exactly what what the scope will be, but at one point in time, someone came up with the idea that it would be a um, three parkour type exercise stations. Okay. Um, the splash pad at Blackberry Farm again. That was, you know, we. It sounds like a a, a great thing, but waiting for the uh, master plan to confirm that. Um, the inclusive play area, uh, and this would be the construction of that. And of course, we would be uh, very well set for for grants on on that one. Jollyman Park irrigation upgrades. We have we have a you know this is a general um, theme on on a lot of our parks. Is, is going in over the years and, and, and taking some of the turf that's not active turf and doing, doing water conservation projects. You know, even if we're not in, in a drought, it's the right thing to do. Take areas that, that, um, that are going to be active and really make sure that we take care of those well. Um, but areas that aren't going to be active, they're passive areas, but they still have turf, convert them to something, you know, much more natural and uh, less water intensive. The Junipero Serra Trail implementation. So this is something that's actually within the um, bicycle transportation plan, and we're, we're th that project's really moving well right now. We've got a good consultant. We've had um, great outreach meetings. Um, it's not going right by a lot of residential areas, so it's very well accepted. Um, you know, as opposed to some of you know some of the uh, you get a lot of. Um, on both sides of the, of the coin on some of our trails. But this one actually is going very well. We're getting very um, good cooperation from the water district to own a lot of that, that area. So um, very happy with that one. Um, McClellan Ranch, the barn renovation. So that one, um, that one was actually done, it conceived with the, um, with the McClellan Ranch master plan several years ago. Uh, the, the, the challenge there is the barn is in a floodplain. So once you once you touch it, once you start doing work to it, you really need to elevate it above the floodplain or protect it, and that becomes very expensive. So I think we had a number on that at one time, but right now we're just holding it here for for uh, the time until um, the priority becomes more of a of, of interest. Um, the McClellan Ranch preserves Stevens Creek access, so this is um, developing an accessible area down to the creek. Uh, you know, for a lot of the a, a lot of the field trips that uh, they get down and and learn a lot. So uh, Memorial Park tennis court restroom replace, replacement, uh, Memorial Park Phase One construction. So this is the next step after we you know. So we have the citywide master plan, the Memorial Park master plan, and then we're finally constructing. So that's what this line item would be, and then the Memorial Park uh, Phase. One design th that they should be flipped. So <laughs> we will we will design it before we construct it. I promise. Okay, um, park specific renovation. So, th uh, like I said, we're, this is the drill down after the citywide master plan is done. We start with Memorial Park, but then really in lockstep, we may be doing some of these, which is Creekside, Jollyman, Linda Vista, Wilson, and Varian. So going out and into the neighborhoods and, and, and saying, okay, well, this is the guidance that we got from the citywide master plan. Now let's talk about, you know, where, where that play structure is going to go, where the benches are going to go. So, th so that's getting into the design details. Um, and then the, um, uh, th so that's the design and construction, the master, the, the, those need to flip. So the master plan and then the design and construction. And then Quinlan, um, the main office service counter modifications. So, so there's a, some some thoughts of redoing that that entrance area in, into Quinlan. Um, so we've got a placeholder for that. 
Stockelmeyer House a new sewer lateral. So that the, the deal was when when Rotary and uh, was was looking at renovating the Stockelmeyer House, the city's part of the deal would was it's on it was on a septic system. The city's part of the deal was to get a, a sewer to go out to Stevens Creek Boulevard. So we've kept that in there. Um, the house is still there, so we'll keep that in there until um, you know it's ready to go into the CIP or something else happens. And then Stockelmeyer uh, legacy, legacy Farm Phase One improvements. So the Legacy Farm is something that was talked about since I've been here. You know, seven eight years. So, so eventually, you know, we have the nice orange grove. We have the creek going through there, and the and the uh, thought was at some point that that would become really a learning area and focused on on the the farming. And with that, that's the end of the presentation. So happy to answer any more questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I mean, this is this is going to have such a tangible impact and has such a tangible impact on um, our community members experiences uh, for both uh, park for both parks and rec services. Um, I was wondering in category four, I know last time was it the time before that we had had a presentation on the medicinal plant and meditation um, uh, garden and I was wondering um, if here we could include that as a potential feasibility study in the unfunded project section because um, I believe uh, almost all of the commissioners had interest in um, in that and it was pretty well received by the audience we had on the day of as well okay yeah thanks any other questions thought all right thank you so much okay and okay. Um, Oh, actually, I did want to say one more thing. Um, going back to the Citywide Parks and Recreation Master Plan, um, I, I'm sure that the City Council will be supportive of this, um, but it, it might be helpful to also say what you guys have been doing um, on that so that they're, I know they're aware, but just as a reminder that there's still more to be done so they don't ask you why you need another 600K allocated. Right. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next up, we have another presentation on our neighborhood events. Thank you for letting us come and talk to you. Uh, Kim Callum, Recreation Supervisor. I have Recreation and Education, Outdoor uh, Education, and our new program is Neighborhood Events. And we're here tonight to present that program to you. We're gonna roll it out this summer. And uh, the nice thing about this program is it does address uh, a lot of things that we heard in surveys that folks want to see in Cupertino. Uh, the issues around cultural events, you'll see those addressed in this program. Um, you'll see events all over the city, not just on one side of the city. Uh, you'll see categories of events, some large, some small. So I think you'll be very pleased to uh, see this event. We're really excited about rolling this event out. I want to introduce the folks that are actually managing uh, the event, and then I'll escape until Code of Conduct comes back up. Um, this is David Chin and Christina Hastings, and they have been with us as part-time employees for three weeks, and the amount of work that they have done in that three weeks is astronomical. Um, we have a lot more to do. Summer's coming on us very fast. Um, but they've created a little presentation. Um, hope you have lots of good questions to ask us because uh, I'm sure they will have the answers. Um, at this point, I'll let them start their presentation and move on. Great, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. All right, so the Neighborhood Events Program. So the program, um, we can sum it up in one sentence. It's a series of engaging educational and fun events in the neighborhood parks. Yeah, so this is including the cultural, uh, culturally diverse programs as well, um, as well as having entertainment for all ages in the parks. And um, so who's asking for it are the community members. We, 
When we got here, we had a survey of, from the block leaders, and uh, it was very helpful to start the program. And um, it's also a long-standing feedback from, as well in the master plan. So when we look at how it began, so the council approved a mid-year budget amendment to bring on two part-time staff to build the program. So that's where we are here. But when you think about how it will continue, uh, we will be requesting ongoing funding for next fiscal year and beyond. And also, the most important thing to make a program like this continue is to have community feedback along the way. So the main thing that we will be focusing on this year is really getting feedback and to make it a customer-driven program. Also, it's important to note that we are part-time employees, so what we can do is to make this um, as clear as possible to lay the foundation for next year. So there's lots of things that can be done in the meantime after we finish at the end of this season to get things ready so when we get into spring of next year, we can really hit the ground running. So there are 33 new activities this summer that we've come up with within the <laughs> weeks that we've been here. Um, they scale, they are scaled differently. Uh, some are very easy to produce and some are a little bit more planning involved. The level one is the fitness in the park. Level two are art activities. Level three are the concerts and level four are also themed movie nights that have some concerts as well to go along with them. And the activities are at 10 parks currently. Um, that's Monta Vista. Creekside, Jollyman, Portal Park, Hoover, Wilson, Linda Vista, Three Oaks, Sterling Bernhardt, and we all also developed a partnership with Main Street Cupertino. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Very glad to hear that. And I would also like to say that we have several other partnerships that are in process for building a relationship for next year. So there may be some cases where it's a particular challenge for some reason. We can, we can always adapt and, and figure out what, what works for the future. So with a whole new set of events, it's very important to be very mindful of the setup. So we've done site visits with every single event. And this has been in direct collaboration with the Public Works team. Uh, we really want to make sure that we're going forward at the same pace and really on the same page for logistics. Also, we're putting a lot of effort into making sure that we have a top quality production. So we really want to make sure that all of the, the technical setup is, is really a, of great quality. So this will include new investments in state-of-the-art equipment. And um, that is also just being really mindful with the, with the equipment, is being really mindful of the neighbors that are surrounding the parks. So um, neighborhood events also include, well, these are the levels. Um, so we have 12 fitness in the park classes. This involves the instructors from the sports center. So this is gonna be really exciting. I hope they get it just as excited. It includes yoga, uh, aerobics, tai chi, so there's quite a, quite a variety. We also have four daytime art and music in the park activities at Sunday afternoons. And this is including like paint, like um, some sort of a paint activity or teaching music activity for the kids. We will have seven concerts. And these are standalone concerts. We'll have other music uh, that you'll hear about in a moment. But these are every other Wednesday and they'll be all over the city, and we really have tried to get a, a very diverse lineup so it can really suit all ages. We also have nine themed events, and all of these have themed special activities with music and a movie at sunset. So just a few examples as a, as a teaser of what we're gonna have. We will have a chess-themed event, and this will have classes for beginners, a competition for all ages, and we'll end the night with a very inspirational movie called Queen of Cotway. 
Bollywood Night is another event. We're going to have some Bollywood dancers. Um, we're going to get the crowd involved in having a, a routine. Also, there's a movie called PK, and it's going to be in Hindi, and it's going to have English subtitles. We'll have a date night. This will have food and drinks for sale. We'll have a soulful and really fun dance band. Uh, we'll have couples games. And then, to top it off, when we get to the end of the night, we'll watch La La Land. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> we'll have astronomy night. This is partnering uh, with local clubs that will bring some telescopes. Um, as we also have a award-winning band called the Blue Eternity Trio there. It's going to be really relaxing as you're looking at the stars. The um, th well, this is just part of it. So there's more to come. There is. This is just a little teaser of what's there. So when we talk about some long-term goals. Um, it's very important to mention that a main purpose and a real goal of this program is to build community relationships. So actually we have, uh, this is our fifth week here, and with that amount of time there's really only so much you can do with, with really engaging with the community. One thing that did really help, as Christina said, was the Neighborhood Block Leader Survey, and we really took that info to heart and took it as, as really valuable feedback. Um, but the ideal scenario is to start these conversations very early from day one of the next season and to, to really make sure that there's buy-in and that people are excited and they feel that they have ownership about events in their own neighborhood. Yeah. At the events, we're, we're hoping to have a tent, well, we will have a tent that um, will give access to those who want to give feedback and so we'll gather those throughout the year. Uh, we will also, a long-term goal is to extend services across the city, and that's, again, really the foundation of why this type of program exists. And then lastly, just to develop local partnerships, to create more synergy within the city of Cupertino. And um, it's also important to note that these types of partnerships become stronger and stronger over time. After you initially have an event with a co-sponsor or another business or a uh, local university, for example, if you build that over several years, it becomes a really valuable relationship in all areas of the department. Yeah, so we are very excited to be here, and we hope uh, you guys are very excited for us to be here, and uh, we thank you for your support. If there's any questions. Wow. Thank you so much. I really do feel like we that this deserves. This <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much. I mean, it's it's absolutely incredible um, what you guys have put together, um, especially in uh, such a short amount of time. It's it's tremendous, and the fact that you guys are thinking also about 2019 as you're building out the 2018 process when, you know, time is of the essence. I think is is amazing and very um, visionary of you guys. I, I think the the three questions I have is one a master calendar. Um, I know we have uh, have one for um, recreation and community services, so it would be great to see that integrated in, but also having just one that's independent um, or some kind of digital flyer, something that, um, you know, when I go talk to community or when we all go talk to community members who go to various events, we can actually, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah that so is in planning. that is actually <laughs> in process yeah. right I'm now. Surprised. So yeah. um, as we, well, not as of now because it's in the evening, but by uh, next week, we'll have the first draft of the complete marketing design, um, and the goal is to is to use this to support the other programs that we have, mm -hmm. but also we'll be attending other festivals at any events you know through the city. We'll be handing out these marketing materials to to drive people to the event. Absolutely amazing! I uh, guessed that you guys had something up your sleeves. <laughs> Um, the second um, question is, uh, what do you need from us to help you make this um, even more successful? Uh, word of mouth. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. that would be that would be very helpful. Yeah, get get whomever is in your neighborhood. If you're in the neighborhood of one of these parks, um, spread the word through the block leaders or through the you know just people. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's make a picnic out of it or something. It would be really helpful. 
Okay, great. And then my third question, um, at the very beginning you talked about um, the fact that you guys are going to be coming back and asking for additional funding for um, 1819. Um, can you just say like a couple more things on that so we know what to expect um, coming up? Yeah, sure. I, I think I can, can um, answer that for them. Um, in the proposed budget this year that um, council will vote to approve or adopt there, I think on the 5th of June, um, includes a line item of on ongoing funding. And when we pr uh, proposed budget changes and additions this year, um, I was fairly um, judicious in those requests to whittle them down to make this program a real priority. And so there is significant money in that in that budget to pay for part-time staffing, uh, fixed assets for the, the program. Not only to replace equipment or to purchase equipment for this, but also for the Memorial Park events. Great. So that the improvement in terms of like the movies and the projection equipment, um, to take them even, you know, even additional improvements. So um, I'm, um, again, it's a council decision. I'm confident that, um, you know that that it's it's going to be met with um, with support, but we'll know on the fifth of June. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. I know I, I see a I'm, lot of green buttons. Yes. So why don't we start Very this excited. Time now? Yeah. <laughs> ahead, um, so I'm really really happy to see this. Very excited. Um, it's a wonderful presentation. It covers what we have discussed over a few months that we would like uh, to see all our parks used, and this does that, um, all the assets are being used. A couple of questions, um, what are the months that this program will run through? Is it June to? So the first event is June 30th. June 30th, okay. Mark your calendars. Okay. <laughs> and okay. the final event of this season will be September 29th. Excellent, okay. And um, the, prog the movies and the events that you have mentioned in the slides, they are logged in? Like they have been booked? Uh, I just got the first contract signed today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those look uh, very nice. Um, is there, and since you have produced all this in such a quick time, can I ask something if you can do a flyer which says coming soon and have highlights of it? We are, we are will be at the volunteer fair on Saturday? Mm -hmm. No rush, but Saturday. <laughs> yeah, no rush. Yeah. I'm just thinking you could do it this three months, uh, three weeks, you could probably get a flyer out today. Yeah, uh, <laughs> coincidentally, um, we, 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 we actually to. wrote something just along those lines, uh, but it's mainly to invite volunteers, which okay. is why we did that. So okay. it, it says just a, from a bird's eye view, um, the new parks that we will be in, mm -hmm. the types of events, the number of events, and then um, volunteers are welcome. Okay, yeah, it would be great. One is the volunteer and then the coming soon kind of, so people who will be coming to the volunteer fair, oh. they will be looking out for announcements. Oh, great idea. You know, to the yeah. park. So we are going to be there at the one of the commission tables, so we can take the phone. Okay. To Thank we you. will have things to talk about. Sure. That would be great. Sure. Um, the, so this is totally different from, this is, in addition to everything that, like the, all the concerts and the movies that are at the Memorial Park, that's not touched. Yes. No, right. Okay. Yep. No, not not one event will be at of our events will be at Memorial Park. Okay. They're all in the other parks. And when we were planning this, we didn't um, have to bump anything at all. What we did was we took all of the existing events that we found going on the city, and we yeah. used that to work around. So there won't be any conflicting Excellent. dates within Memorial Park. Um, how will this be announced? Would be it be in the recreation catalog or just through the website? Well, um, the recreation catalog has a very, very early timeline where they start. I believe it's around winter time yeah. when they're ready for summer. So we missed the boat on that okay. side, but we will have a quad fold brochure, mm. which is the main main marketing piece that we'll have okay. for some of the particular events that that require a more targeted approach, particularly the culturally specific events, we may create special flyers just for those events and to really reach out to audiences directly. Okay. 
Um, it will also be on the website. We'll have a unique URL for that. And um, in the future, the goal would be to include this in, in the regular marketing and the program guides and other things. Excellent. A question about the fitness classes. Um, they are free, right? Yes. Every event. Yeah, okay. every event. Yes. Will there be a limit, like the capacity? Uh, Hopefully no. not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because, they, you know, safety-wise that, you know, if you have yoga or you're doing some aerobics, then that many people can be accommodated in that park. Right, kind of right. And I right. think a big part of that is getting to know these parks and how the, how the space can manage yeah. certain, certain groups of people. And part of that is scaling the, the different levels hmm. of events. So if you have a fairly small park and it can't accommodate much, Sterling Barnhart, for hmm. example, is yeah, small, small families. Yeah. It's, it's a great park, um, but it can't hold a big movie in the park event. So right. that's where we'll have something a little bit more modest in size. We expect maybe 15, 20 people. Other parks, Creekside, for example, you could lot. easily fit mm -hmm. 1,500 people oh, there, yeah. and we'll aim to. So, <laughs> okay. um, so we'll we'll look at and we'll adjust where we put events accordingly. And the planning would include the number of instructors you will have based on the park size. Yes, because one probably instructor may not be able to handle 50 or 60 people outdoors, right? Yeah, right. we'll be working with the sports center with that. <laughs> okay. And last question, <laughs> sorry, I had so many things. I was so excited <laughs> about this whole thing. Um, the feedback, you said there will be uh, a table or a tent at events to get the feedback. May I suggest an online feedback form at the, at the Park and Rec website, which, oh. you know, when, because oftentimes people finish a movie, they're ready to pack and go, and sure. no time to give you feedback. So it would be great if we can have an online feedback form that people can do it at their own time. Yes. Great suggestion. Because afterwards yeah. they think, oh, that was good, or that was, I wish that was different we later will, on. So. We will also be having an email, a neighborhood events email that they can directly email um, to that address as well for feedback. That will be on the information. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, I'll be quick because she asked most of my questions. Um, how, I was going to say, how about an app? Wouldn't that be easier? Because then you're right yes. there, and then you could go to the app, and you could oh. give your feedback. But I don't know what that would entail. So um, I guess one of my questions was about, all, are all these events on the, in the um, weekends, in the evening, any during the day, so during the week, or how does that work? So most of the concerts are on a Wednesday evening. Okay, um, the okay. fitness classes are on a Thursday. The um, movies and concerts are either on a Friday or a Saturday. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. And then they're free, obviously. You they're can just free. show up. But something, say, like the chess contest, or is there anything that they'd have to sign up ahead of time for? We, we really do want to make it completely free, yes. Okay. There may be... Um, some cases throughout the summer where we will partner with the the teen program and there there are a couple opportunities where those might involve registration but it won't formally be a part of the neighborhood events program we'll just be supporting them um, as far as uh, on a technical side okay well I just want to say thank you it's very ambitious and uh, but it's really exciting too Congratulations, it looks great. Um, you talked about the marketing design. I, you know, I'd really like to get more information about what you're planning there and, and to see what's going on there. I think there's some, um, some built-in opportunities for you to market. Um, when we do have the, the events at Memorial Park, those are people who come out and do stuff mm -hmm. already. So definitely marketing to them, having flyers available at the concerts in the park, at the Shakespeare in the park, um, and at other movie nights. So that you're bringing those people in. Um, and so, yeah, the marketing design is just critical to this whole thing. And so I, I would like to find out more about that when you have the opportunity. <laughs> I understand yeah. it's, it's still early. Well, just to let you know, um, this is all in process. And the, the goal is to have the brochure in hand by early June. So it okay. will give us at least a few weeks to, um, to, to get it distributed. And yeah. all of our planning has been working backwards from this marketing deadline. 
Right, and so I'm wondering at some of these parks where the neighbors are not used to seeing events at their parks, is there something that we can put up like a notice at the park? Yes, this ahead? is actually in process as well. So we uh, will have door hangers for approximately Great. 200 homes surrounding every new park that we'll be visiting. Awesome. Yeah, I was yeah. hoping you'd have yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it serves as both a, a formal notification but also an invitation. We want people Absolutely. to know about it plan around it. If they really hate it, they can get out of town. <laughs> if they really want to know, then it's it's the first word of right, the Right, and encourage them to be walking and riding their bikes yes, to the events. That, that's Certainly. Um, part so of it, yeah. That's a, a yeah. big thing that we want mm -hmm. to encourage um, people to not be all driving. And, and the neighbors don't want other people driving into their the neighborhoods neighborhood, either. Yes. So hopefully it will be locals walking and, and riding their bikes. But congratulations. Thank you. Look forward to seeing more. Okay, everyone asked you all my questions, but um, so I, I just have one. Well, it's fabulous. I forgot someone used a great word. Ambitious. Wow. Three weeks, four weeks. This is very ambitious. And um, as someone also said, it really checks off lots of the boxes that we were, we've been talking about. Uh, so uh, just a thought on marketing and free. Um, I'll just use my um, block leader group as an example. So we have maybe, uh, I'm near Linda Vista Park, and then maybe there are six block leaders who all have courts and or a set of 200 houses and we all have email we're on email loops and our little king of our block chuck he emails us all the time when something's going on uh you know a, a pole is being put up at the end of a street it might uh have some outages or someone's coming and lining your street we, we get those all the time so using the neighborhoods I'm sure uh, they have them blocked off, an email that goes out to a block leader that says, tell your 20 people that coming this Friday to Linda Vista Park is date night. I'd love that. <laughs> so for instance. Exactly. Yeah, yes. so and, that's and free, it's email, and it's uh, personal, and I would, an I would look at something that my block leader sent me. Yeah, you know? we, we would love that. Yeah. And, and um, we, we do plan to, um, we, we wanted to wait to make a more formal announcement of, of the list until it is complete and we have the, the formal marketing piece done so that when that becomes public record or that gets out into the hands, we know that nothing is going to change. change. But right. as soon as that is done, we will be working with um, the, the department's um, block leader coordinator. Yeah, she's fabulous. So Absolutely. She, yeah, so, so we really want her part of that. and. And again, this all ties into inviting people, but also reminding them that we want to invite them to be part of the process right. and to tell us, you know, how can we make this program more just for your community? Okay, thank you. This is really great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. Okay. If I could add, um, <clears throat> there are really two prerequisites, and we've been thinking about this in part with your guidance over the last year um, for some time. Um, one of the criteria is that we need to respect the cultural diversity that is Cupertino. And thus, you see events, you'll see marketing materials um, in different languages. Uh, as we develop this over time, it's a matter of inviting our community members to, to come out for something that they feel very, very comfortable. And so it's, it's more than a celebration. The second criteria is um, community involvement and in, in what David touched on is absolutely right inviting folks to be part of it but our long-term goal would be over the years to where the community groups would form their own um, kind of planning committee in the neighborhood for their park and so that they would help they would end up choosing the titles and picking the bands and and using it as a springboard to perhaps neighborhood watch or other opportunities within the you know to build a, a true sense of camaraderie and, and neighborhood and community and uh, I, I'm just I'm thrilled and I'm going to be at as many or all of these events as possible <laughs> personally and so anyway um, we'll look forward to a lot more information about this and we'll include updates in my comments as we go forward. I, I was just uh, remembering an event that was uh, brought to us by the Teen Commission or something, a camping event in the Memorial Park. Is that part? So um, coincidentally, that is the one I was <laughs> okay. referring to. Um, 
and I don't know how much we're allowed to say about it, but it's okay. it's moving forward, and that okay. is one that we are supporting. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Great. I think that's all the questions we have. Thank you again for yeah, putting this for together. Time. That's an impressive, yeah, uh, impressive you. three weeks that you've had. So, <laughs> totally. um, congratulations on on uh, setting all this up, and we are excited to support you guys and also come ourselves. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, next up we have the new enterprise software presentation, Timely. Okay. I gotta see, okay. Okay. There we go. Um, this is my presentation um, presenting for um, our team that are putting this together, um, Rochelle Sander and uh, Mariah Dable and their team. They're doing absolutely amazing work um, to bring aboard and implement a new red, uh, recreation registration software package. Um, as you may know, some time ago we, um, we made a decision to go uh, and contract with a, um, a company that was to provide not an off-the-shelf set of software programs for us to entertain registration and memberships and the like, um, but this was one that was more focused on custom, just for, for you know for our city. However, when we got into it, we realized that it really didn't meet our business needs. In part because our business needs were were changing. Um, so we ended up selecting a new software package, and it did put us back a little bit in terms of our time timeline. Um, we ended up with a program called ActiveNet, and the reason that it, we chose ActiveNet, or what it does for us, is it provides a comprehensive system of activity registration. So currently, you can sign up for a program at the senior center, or at the sports center, or at the community center, and they're really on three separate kinds of systems. They do inter interlink a little, but not completely. And the new active registration system, you'll be able to go to any of our facilities and enroll in, say, swimming lessons. You'll be able to, to do registration at any of the facilities, as well, of, as well, of course, online. So it brings us into the kind of next generation. It will, will keep track of our memberships uh, as people sign up and, and become members, say, at the, at the um, sports center or sign up for classes and activities. We'll have a database of information, whereas if there's something that we need to remind someone of at one facility, it, it has, this program has the capability of popping it up on a little reminder screen, that kind of thing. Um, we'll be able to manage all of our facility reservations, which are, are fairly substantial. We do quite a bit. So again, you'll be able to go online, you'll be able to reserve picnic sites and the like. Um, it also manages a point, of, a point of sale system, now, which is selling of resale items between the facilities and within. Um, there are a couple of, of exceptions. Um, golf tee times will, be on, uh, will continue on the same system that they're on. This program doesn't accommodate that kind of, of program. And also the cafe at the swimming pool. And that's because from an efficiency standpoint, when you order your cheeseburger, say, and um, you know they're really good, um, and you want to decide you want pickles or onions or what have you, those special orders, this system doesn't have a way to communicate back to the kitchen. So that system will be a little, will remain as it is now. Um, so the the bottom line is this is a very um, well structured, well put together, very consistent, very reliable. Um, it's, it's going to focus on improving our service, and um, I'm you know, really looking forward to, to getting it online. Again, it's been around for around 15 years. Um, as the slide shows, there's um, over 1,000, you know, 1,300 different cities that use this software, including um, several in the, in the area here. Um, I've personally been involved with the, the program. Kim, who you saw earlier, was involved in, in um, changing uh, a park system over to it. 
Um, in fact, David even has worked that this program. Um, it's um, the, again, it's really the top, the top of the um, of the different kinds of registration softwares. Um, let's see. I don't think that we need to uh, need to go into some of the reporting and all, but it does give internally gives us a chance to do a little bit stronger. Uh, opportunity for printing reports and auditing and such. Um, the go live date, which is really the the big one, is going to be late into in 2018. We've started now. Um, we're in the implementation phase, and we created a schedule, and we started exactly on the day that that schedule was to you know was to be implemented. The folks from ActiveNet came here to the town or came here to Cupertino, and they they've taken us through to show you what. The ex or to give you an example of, of how challenging implementing a program like this is and changing our software, um, our supervisors and managers this month have all day Monday and Tuesday, each Monday and Tuesday this month, just dedicated to this training. It follows a train the trainer approach. So we'll be training individuals and then they'll be training others. Before we go live, there'll be a series of opportunities to tweak the program to, to check thing, you know, to try it while we still have the existing class program. One of the real benefits once we do go live is that this will be in the cloud. So the, um, the system won't be, um, won't be reliant only on one or two servers here in, in the city. Um, again, there's, there's a whole lot that goes into making this happen. The decisions to go with ActiveNet were not reached idly. Um, our um, IT uh, director, Bill Mitchell, was very involved and is the project manager uh, personally for this, uh, you know, this, this switchover. So um, anyway, if you have any questions, um, you can try to answer them. But I, I can tell you that, again, we're moving as expeditiously as we can. And once it's, once it's done, it, it will be up and running and be very, very smooth. Great, thank you so much, Jeff. Um, I have a couple of questions. Well, one, congrats on being able to um, start the implementation on the day yeah. it was intended. I know <laughs> in terms of project planning, that is not an easy thing to do, mm -hmm. especially uh, in a municipality. So great job, it's a testament to um, your leadership as well. Um, is this, uh, just from a compliance perspective, because this is gonna be in the cloud, um, do you know what compliance standards um, and data management standards that this meets, and is it um, GDPR compliant? I know that's a European standard, but that's actually a new, that, that's the newer standard that most U.S. companies have to abide by as well. I'll need to defer that to our, our IT specialist. Okay. I will tell you from a financial standpoint, it's of course all PCI compliant. Okay. So our, our finance records and all of that use of credit cards mm -hmm. are all very, very well secured. Okay. Um, it would be uh, just great because it's on the cloud and because uh, less about us and ActiveNet and more about just what the security, the, the technological security measures are on the data that's stored on the cloud. Um, it would be great to take a um, secondary look at, look at that just given everything that's happened sure. um, in the past couple of months. Um, I know that we have a lot of other questions and that you also are going to in your director's report talk about what's been happening in the past uh, mm -hmm. week as per uh, other emails we've received, so yes. um, I won't get too much into that until your director's report, but do we have any um, questions or comments on this? So I have, um, I will, uh, so one is the testing phase of this. Uh, will this be out as a beta for some other community to test it out and see if the features that are, um, that should have been there are there? Um, actually, we've mandated with the company that we don't want to be involved in any kind of beta testing. We wanted to make sure that when they implement this, it's tried and true already. So uh, what we are getting, that's really the difference between a customized package and one that's, that's really off the shelf. With that said, we may have to change a few of our, our business practices to come in line with how things are done within the program, but I, I don't see anything that's insurmountable for us. Uh, we do I was know, thinking yeah. more in terms of what our community needs, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, in terms of, um, 
a couple of examples, like when you make the reservations of any of the parks or facilities, there is no, uh, right, cur the current status is you have to call in mm -hmm. to make sure that that date is available. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to see when I am booking something, what is available and I can choose because I might have two or three alternate dates. Mm -hmm. But when you call in, you give the date that, and then they will tell you yes or no. I can't just do online reservations. But you so. will be able to. You've okay. got, this is all, everything is in real time. So for instance, if you're signing up for a yoga class and there are 30 positions in the class, it won't allow you to over register when we, when we program and put in the information. And that's part of this implementation is telling, telling the system what is it that we offer you know how many how many spaces there are what the prices are what the descriptions of each of the we've got literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dis, of class descriptions that yeah, need to go actually, in there actually i was talking more about the facility reservation like yeah. a park or a building or quinlan center room mm -hmm. or you know a community hall um that it currently i cannot mm -hmm. say on this day, I want a room okay. which is this capacity. And it doesn't give me a list of here are your three options. Mm -hmm. You can book either the community hall or the Quinlan Center room or, you know, Creekside room or whatever. So, I, I mean, that would be great benefit. Then more, you will probably have more takers mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, rather than having those facilities empty. Because I, I, I can't see that. I'm going to um, ask uh, Kim Callum, our recreation supervisor, who happens to still be here, to help address that for you. So facility booking is uh, one of the components that we purchase for, for the, the program, and it is much better than what we've had in the past. Uh, will you be able to book your own facility online or your room? most likely you'll be able to go see what's available, mm -hmm. but we want to do the booking. There's a lot of questions that we ask mm -hmm. uh, as far as what equipment do you need. Some of that can be done online, some can't. I think as we uh, roll out this program, there's some modules that we're getting into deeper than other modules. R of course, registration's our primary, uh, our primary module right away. Facility booking is a big one. I'm in the training right now. They're showing us how functional. It, it is very functional. Um, so I think you'll get more than you've gotten in the past. Will you be able to go on and book by yourself without a staff person assistant? Probably not at this point. Hmm. Will, will there be uh, some kind of you know, future plan of doing that? Because we'll look, I understand we'll look that you have it. to do a deposit, you have to go through some security issues, but you may be able to lock in for like 24 hours by the time you show up at the... Yeah, there, there's the capability is there, and we'll look at it, I'm sure, okay. as we, we go down the, the path. It's, we have so many different facilities, so mm -hmm. many different kinds of rooms yes. that have different capabilities. Some have sinks, some have refrigerators, some have chairs, some have right. tables, you know, right. and so all those things have to be addressed and it really can't be done in a very uniform fashion. And so it, it makes it a little more complicated to just say, here, go book yourself. Uh, but there, you'll see a much better functionality. Okay. And I think that we'll see our online and re registration just increase like crazy because it's so much easier for the customer to go in and click, click, click to get a class and instead of 12 clicks, maybe three or four. Right. So that's another, um, having been a user of booking classes uh, when my kids were younger, uh, I would love to see a feature where I could actually send a question to the teacher who's running the class because sometimes the description would say, yes, this is a class, but I have this thing, doubt whether should I register my kid for that or not. I would love to see that feature that there is a, some kind of a communication between the person registering and the teacher that could be resolved by a simple reply. It's something we can look at. It's a little challenging in that not very few of our part-time instructors have email with the city. And so oh. to give their personal email is just not a cool thing or their phone numbers. But people always, and they do this now, communicate through our coordinators hmm. all the time. Danny gets calls, Mary Lou gets calls about details of the classes. And so uh, they'll have the mechanism to do that. One of the nice marketing pieces uh, of this program is I could take a class list and email them all information about what they need the first day, which we did not have that functionality uh, in the class program. So it's going to give us some, some different opportunities. 
Okay. And this will also register classes for senior center? Yes. Okay. And that's, that's a benefit to this program is because we have several systems going on right now, so this will get everybody uh, pretty consistent for the most part. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Um, go ahead. So will it also do membership at Senior Center yeah, and the Sports Center? It does a great job with memberships. It's a great module, and we'll utilize that right away. And we'll also use membership to book plots for the community gardens yeah. because awesome. we can do that for a year at a time like a membership. And will it be able to handle, like there are at the Sports Center, like the trekking classes where you can only have eight in the 8 a.m. class or whatever, that yeah. real time? You bet. Yeah. Um, you can... As a programmer, um, you have a lot of flexibility. If I know that I can have 10 people in a class, but I know there might be some walk-in people coming in, I could program it for eight and leave two spots available for walk-in. You can control your maxes and your minimums that way. Um, and so it's a nice opportunity. And if you try to sign up for a class and it's full, it automatically puts you on the wait list. If a spot opens up, it automatically pulls your name up as the first person in line, and we call you and get you in. That's great. I think that will improve the <coughs> user satisfaction because there's been some question about, you know, the fairness of how some of those slots get filled in the past. So I think that will be really good. <coughs> yeah. Well, one of the reasons or, or one of the primary reasons, other than an improvement in service, that we've decided to go away from the current class system is that the class system is um, – antiquated, if that's the word I'm trying to say, it's antique. Antiquated. Yeah, antiquated. It's, um, but the level of service, it's going offline. The company is literally bringing it down. They've stopped providing maintenance support. So we have a set amount of time until we had to make this change or we wouldn't have a program uh, that's operational at all. So. Excellent. Any other questions, comments? Um, well, we'll look forward to getting um, some periodic feedback through the implementation process over the next couple of months um, and uh, for having it go live in 2018. And, you know, I, I, I can imagine that there will likely be a, a couple of uh, hiccups along the way or a couple of, you know, additional modules that we might need to customize the platform for even more. Um, but I did a little background research into ActiveNet, and it looks like the modular nature of the software is something that's going to be very beneficial for us, not just in terms of how we design it now, but what it could look like in the future. So that um, that's really exciting. Thank you. Yeah, and internally, it is the department's priority right now to get uh, get to get up and running. And uh, you know, my my mission is to provide all the support possible for the hardworking staff that are just just doing an amazing job to to uh, to make this thing happen. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Um, all right. Ooh, my little order of my papers got messed up. Okay. Uh, next, we don't have any uh, postponement. This postponement. So, um, oral communications. Hi. <laughs> uh, seeing as there are no uh, public oral communications, written communications, which uh, there have been none submitted. Um, now on to old business, uh, the first of which is the code of conduct. And this is, um, I believe, for us to give our um, approval to send this on to the uh, city council. Hello, Kim Callum. Um, so, brought this back to you guys. We had great comments and feedback from you guys last time, and I took it back to our leadership team, and we discussed some of the issues in depth and went back and vetted it out with our staff again. And so we did make some changes in um, what you see. You'll see the copy of the Code of Conduct. There are some graphic things that still need to be fixed on it. Grant and we'll get a hold of it before it goes out, so don't, don't worry about that too much. Um, in terms of some of the changes we made, let me see where my list is on my desk. Ah, here we go. So some of the things that you suggested, we removed the zero toler tolerance language at the bottom. We feel like with most of this stuff, we have code enforcement to back us up. We have city code. And so the same thing, Nisha, with the dress appropriately, we removed that because we figure there's other ways if we need to address that, that we mm -hmm. can do that. And uh, we kind of had to step back and look at it general, generationally. 
because some of us were, I mean, we were all on different places where we were thinking about that. So it was a, a great conversation and, and uh, feedback for us to have, and uh, we ultimately decided that we have other ways that we can uh, provide that support to staff. Um, we also uh, added the word threatening, mm -hmm. Carol. So uh, when we uh, have those issues at the sports center and somebody's making a threat upon somebody, we have a, a tool that can help solve it. Um, in terms of uh, being under the influence or being impaired, uh, we added I uh, illegal before intoxicating. Uh, we moved the dress appropriately in line, as I said before, revised how the city is addressed, tried to make that more consistent, mm -hmm. and we combined the lines of respect, respect, respect into mm -hmm. one with some bullet points under it. Uh, so we feel pretty comfortable with this document now. Um, you guys have any questions for me? Great. Um, you have no, I was just okay. going to say you incorporated all of the well, things the that we discussed yeah. and, and did it really well. And Thank you. How you said to put your stuff yeah. all yeah. in one spot. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. It looks uh, it looks really good. Um, and then yeah, you had mentioned that there's going to be somebody just doing a visual kind of. Yeah, Brant and our graphic dude. He'll he'll get one more look at it. We okay. didn't in, in case there were more changes. I didn't want to make go back and forth and keep having him make changes. So I this is my graphic expertise that needs to now be cor corrected. Okay. okay, great. You, yeah, you did. Um, just uh, I, it's part of what I do for a living. To yeah, yeah. So you're this, pick, so you're that's why I said it at the beginning. Yeah. You know, because I know I knew where you're your like, eyeballs were going to go. <laughs> Um, but this looks this looks fantastic, and thank you so much for um, you know being flexible and really taking our feedback to heart. So um, this looks this looks great, and um, we need to move this to a vote. Correct. Um, all right. So looking for a motion to approve the code of conduct as. Um, Can I ask just a yeah. question in terms of the implementation of this? Um, I assume it's going to be well. What are the next steps and? I assume it's going to be posted places. Are we going to have it be part of the sign-up um, process for? We we programs? can. We haven't we haven't talked about that right now on ActiveNet. You can link anything almost, but we have a lot of waivers already. And uh, I know from Portland, we were ActiveNet in Portland. You could kill 14 trees with one transaction with all the waivers and things that you want to give folks. So it's just something that we need to look at. Um, and, but it's possible, and I think that uh, the first thing to do is to train our staff. We've talked to staff. We've vetted with it, them with it, and we have departmental meetings every month, so we'll go over this and talk about how we're going to uh, address folks with it. Uh, other than that, we'll post it at all of our facilities and <clears throat> call it good. And then I didn't think this in particular was going to council. I thought that any that there was another step, another piece of it that's actually going to council. That's absolutely correct. Your vote tonight, if you accept this, will imp we will take that and implement it in the facilities immediately. However, the um, the ability to enforce the code of conduct um, will require uh, something a little different. We rather than administrative citations, which is what the city code now offers us as an opportunity. And, you know, code enforcement comes and literally gives you a ticket, and that's not really what we want to encourage in the facilities. Um, we're looking at a, a way to have a graduated um, exclusion policy, and that'll be something that will end up going to the um, going to city council. This will be an attachment onto that so they can understand why we're asking. Okay, so the motion then that we're looking for here is to approve the code of conduct for all uh, parks and recreation facilities. Great. And will that um, escalation process, will that come to us before city council? Of course, absolutely. And what's the time frame on that? Uh, probably sometime after the July break, so probably August or September. Okay, so we'll have, we're going to be in a little bit of a limbo in, at least our posting this to have the enforcement kind of following along behind. We do have, have built-in enforcement. If you look at code, there, there is a, a, the way they break down how they deal with folks in the city in general. So we have some, some uh, structure that we can follow where we won't be left out in the cold. And it, and it is progressive. We looked at the code. Okay. 
I just want to make sure that the staff is comfortable yeah. and you, and they're tr well trained and. Yeah. And, and I suspect that just having this posted and being able to communicate it is going to, to prevent 98% of the issues. So, um, when I was at the mayor's meeting yesterday and I brought it up, I was under the impression that the mayor would like to see this as come to council. So, he was, he was not, that's the first he heard, so. Uh. I, I appreciate knowing that, and we certainly, uh, now knowing that, um, we'll speak with mayor. Mm -hmm. I'll speak with mayor next opportunity. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, looking for a motion to approve the code of conduct for immediate um, posting in our parks and recreation facilities. I move to vote on this to approve it for posting. I'll second it. Great, moving to a vote. Wonderful, motion passes for the code of conduct and thank you so much for all of your work on this. Excellent. We appreciate your support. Um, this is can really I, gonna make a big can difference. Can I go so. back to ActiveNet for one thing? What Kim said brought, brought a thought. I don't oh. actually know what the point of order is on that. Is that permitted from a Robert's rule? I can committee. ask later. Yeah. I yeah. can ask later. Um, okay, great. So let's uh, go <laughs> ahead and move on to the 2017-2018 um, work plan. Do we know the time for the May 17th meeting? Did I miss that? No, I was including that in, in my comments, but it is 6.30 on May 17th. Great. And is that here? Where is that? Is it here? I'm sorry, no, it's in the uh, Cupertino room uh, at the Quinlan Community Center. And um, do I need to adjourn to that meeting because it is a special meeting or no? It, it will be a special meeting that we will have to follow. We will want to follow the regular protocol. Which is? Um, which is to call the commission to order with a quorum and then adjourn for the work session in a sense and okay. then bring it back for discussion. But that's on the day, so I don't need to Correct. talk about that today. Great. Um, this is one question. Go ahead. Do we have any sense of when the, um, the dog park, the off-leash dog hours uh, research might be done? Our public affairs office is working on that. Um, they have been very, very busy with some other very public um, uh, projects. And as a result, I've made multiple communications with the, the staff. And um, I, I, I hesitate to take a guess, uh, but I will anyway. I would say sometime in the next month to six weeks, there should be a survey that's distributed. Um, there's another one in the queue ahead of it. And um, I'm not sure exactly where they're, they're going to end up on their time, timeline. But I am very anxious to get that underway. We've, in a sense, I've made some commitments to the, the, the neighbors around Jollyman Park, and I um, would love to see that sooner than later. Yeah, could we just put it on the list of the items to schedule? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think uh, there's actually going to be, um, with the leadership, 95014, there's going to be a presentation about um, dog friendly Cupertino or something like that. That'll be very interesting to see yeah. what they're presenting there. All right, any other feedback on this? Um, the one thing that we have discussed a couple of times is the, um, the senior or the age friendly transportation service thing um <laughs> it would be great to see that on here not just for age friendly but we had talked about uh parks and recreation uh, transportation for parks and recreation services and what that could look like um and i'd like that to be included on here as well any other 
additions? Do we, do we need help doing that? Item for the schedules? The senior center repair presentation? Mm. We have the thing that's in CIP, Jeff. Is that necessary for under items to be scheduled, the senior, se senior center repairs presentation? Do we need a presentation on that? I'm not sure you do because again, it is, it is listed under the CIP. Great, then we can take that off the list. Um, all right, if there are no other comments, then we shall continue forward. Uh, moving on to uh, staff and commission reports. Um, director, the floor is yours. Okay, um, I wanna start tonight by, by letting you know that our emergency management program, of course, has been up and running and just since November and made amazing progress. Um, there is a program called Alert SCC that you may or may not be aware of. Um, it's a program that during times of emergency or times of disaster issues where we need to communicate, you know that, that what we see in the newspaper quite, quite, um, uh, um, quite uh, often when there is a flood or a disaster or an earthquake is agencies and individuals that are asking, how come I wasn't aware or didn't know? Well, Alert SEC will inform you via your cell phone, assuming cell towers are active, um, of the pending issue or what you need to know. And in fact, all you need to do is text your zip code to 888777. And I'm doing it as we speak. 888777, and you text your zip code, and you are now registered. And so, and then text it. And if you have several zip codes, um, I suppose you, if you want information about you know, things happening in those zip codes, you could get that as well. But I'll, I'll repeat it again. This is one of the real priorities we have to get the word out. Right now, we're somewhere around 15 to 20 percent of the, the city is involved. And our goal really is to get us, um, our, our short range goal is to double that. And we're trying to do that by the fall. So 888777, text your zip code. I think I sound like an infomercial, but it's a really good reason to do it. And you'll get a response back. There's no paperwork, there's, there's no I issues now. Uh, texting, if you have a phone that, that charges you for a text, that may be something to be you know, concerned about. Okay, the next thing to, oh, you should receive something if you have service here in the. Um, yeah, it, yeah, and and so we have multiple. We have a marketing campaign to get that word out here in the city. We're we're going to be targeting as many groups and people as possible. Please tell everybody, anybody and everybody. If if um, you know if you run into somebody you haven't seen for a while, say it's nice to see you. By the way, eight 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 seven seven seven. We have this thing on Saturday, which hopefully will people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I signed up for this during the wildfires up mm -hmm. in um, Sonoma because my sister lives up there and I'm constantly getting things now so I'm glad I figured out how I can stop those <laughs> but uh, yeah it really works really well because I'm constantly getting texts from them yeah well we would hope that you would never receive the, you know because that would mean there's something sure, happening well, that needs sure. everybody's yeah. uh, attention but in, it, but we know that they are bound to happen, and, and we're very careful. We, we will not access or use this system unless it's, there's a lot of checks and balances to it. So how widespread is this program around the country or the state or whatever? Well, I, I can just speak for, for Santa Clara County at this point. Oh. I know, I, I understood earlier today that, that it, it is spread around the state and is being used by different counties, oh. but this particular one is, uh, is a county function for okay. us. Uh, the other thing is um, it would be great to pass along to them the fact that they use um, data to transfer this information is actually kind of concerning to me because mm -hmm. in many, if not most, data connectivity becomes a really big issue. 
Um, they're very simple APIs that they can integrate into their software. And I know that this is a step above us because we're just you know use, utilizing them. But if there mm -hmm. is a way to provide feedback to this company, um, they need to implement uh, the uh, they need to implement um, mesh network API into their. Uh, servers and that basically makes it possible for them to send out messages and alerts directly to phones without actually needing data. I will pa definitely pass that on to the emergency yeah. management folks in the county. Great, and um, I have lists of companies that can do that um, in a very cost-effective manner. So, great. Okay, the next thing on my list, my infomercial is over, <laughs> is um, to talk to you a little bit about the class software that we that we told you uh, earlier that we were going away from. Well, class software um, is server-based, and unfortunately, um, a little more, I guess it's now been about two weeks, um, our server crashed at the community center, and leaving us without a functioning uh, registration system. Yeah. And in addition to that, there are also backups that were built in. And it was just a perfect storm because those backups failed at the same time for, for very various reasons. Um, but I will tell you that we were able to restore a database from a little while ago. We were able to repopulate it. We're not up and running yet as we want to be, but our coordinators have done a her, uh, an amazing job of re-entering much of the data that needed to be done. We have thousands of transactions that needed to be caught, facility reservations needed to be re-entered. And, and just to make sure that, um, uh, that in the case of you know, a, a picnic reservation, we took every step possible to ensure that we have that in the system and that there aren't two of those for the same day and, and things like that. We've um, scaled back some of the registration numbers on the classes to make sure that there was room, there will be room for in case we end up with more registrations. Uh, but sitting and watching the problem solving, one of the great honors of my, uh, my time here in the city, watching the folks put their heads together when they needed to figure it out and, and figuring out extremely complex problems on how to access the data was just amazing. So they've made I incredible, uh, incredible progress. And we hopefully, in the next week or so, we'll be back to, back to normal. Uh, lots of lessons learned, and um, it, it, it's fodder for why we need to move to a cloud-based system uh, and, and a, a system like ActiveNet. So uh, uh, we, we've dodged some bullets, but it has affected our, you know, our, our service level. I mean, people have not, are not able to register. There's a few days where they couldn't. We, we were really at a standstill, but uh, nothing but uh, amazing respect for the people that are much smarter than me that helped figure this thing out. So um, the, the next thing is um, apricots. Just wanted to, to fill you in. One of the, one of the gems in, this, in our city parks is at Varian, where we've got dozens and dozens, probably 50, um, mature apricot trees. I don't know if you know or have been over there. Um, we, uh, we reached a deal with um, uh, a nonprofit to come and harvest those apricots because the, in the past there's been history of people coming into the park in the middle of the night and picking them all. And the neighbors that live around the park aren't very happy about that. So um, we're working with, uh, you know, we'll be working with the neighbors shortly, but there'll be signs that are going to be put up there in the next week or so that say, please don't pick the apricots. It's, it's um, you know, I'm almost tempted if I had the opportunity to, to bring out a security system, you know, to, to manage it and, and such. But th that's, that's a difficulty all by itself and brings with us a whole bunch of new new concerns and issues. Um, we talked real briefly about the master plan meeting on May 17th. For folks um, in the audience, and particularly on television, invite everybody to come to that. It's going to be really exciting. It's, it's a different kind of a, of a public involvement meeting. There's going to be a lot of technical slides that, you'll, that people will see have the opportunity to um, use an electronic clicking device to vote, and we'll have real-time um, real-time results. It'll be really kind of fun and, and very, very fruitful for us. Uh, at the same time, we'll be presenting the three concept ideas, active, passive, and, and the arts, uh, for how Memorial Park may or may not end up 
to be looking. And they're, very, they're just for, these are concepts for discussion. So you'll be able to take different pieces from each one and, and provide input and say, well, I'd really like this, but I'd rather have this, and, and that kind of that kind of thing. So that'll take place again on May 17th at the community center at uh, 630. I'm excited to announce, in addition to what you saw with neighborhood groups, our um, outdoor concerts are right around the corner. Um, June 7th, they start with the Cupertino Symphonic uh, band and goes from there. A couple of really fun ones. On the 28th, the Lion Eyes, which is all about the Eagles, will be will be in town uh, playing for us. And then one on, on July 4th, um, Cocktail Monkeys on July 5th, Steel in Chicago, which is um, a group that specializes playing in, in songs from Steely Dan to the group Chicago. So that's, that's going to be an exciting night. Um, in the new proposed budget, we've asked Council for funds to contract with a local sound company to bring the concerts. They're already great, but bring them to a higher level even. And um, so starting with the one uh, on the fourth, hopefully we'll have directional sound, but the bigger, heavier bass, you know, the, the, the really nice sound system like you'd expect at any, any concert. And so um, anyway, that's, that's what I have. Those are kind of our priorities where we're heading right now. Things are really busy around the offices this time of year, so getting ready for summer. Excellent. Um, we're, you know, we're always in awe of, of the work that um, you guys all do, so thank you. Um, and glad that we've solved that um, apricot problem as well. <laughs> I actually did hear about a lot of neighbors being kind of frustrated by that situation, so. Um, all right, commission reports. Um, let's, let's keep it short and sweet. Mine's short and sweet because I just went to one. Uh, so I went to the block leader uh, presentation, which are always wonderful. Um, that's a great program. Oh my gosh, she does such a great job. It's upbeat, it's fun, it gets all the neighbors together. And we heard a little bit, and there were oohs and ahs in the audience when uh, these young folks presented this uh, go to your local park. It was really, literally oohs and ahs. Uh, so, um, your neighborhood watch is happy, healthy, and we're looking forward to their parks. I had the opportunity to attend the Holly Festival of Colors, and it was awesome. <laughs> I'd never gone before, and um, people are just throwing <laughs> paint powder <laughs> on every, you know, and, and I thought, you know, you get a little here. I mean, these people were oh, just really? head yes. to toe. And I had no idea. And some of them were very well prepared. They had garbage bags, trash bag liners, you know, so that they, when in they the went to sit in their cars down. again, yeah. and the kids, yeah. and all of that, um, it was um, it was just a great event. Um, they also had Bollywood dancing, and um, they had a presentation, and also a little um, class demonstration. And literally everybody in the park participated. I mean, from the little kids to the grandmas and everybody in between. I mean, a lot of times you get some sort of presentation and a few brave souls will come up. Everybody was doing their dancing and just having a really good time. So I thought that was a very good event and I was happy I went to it. Excellent. Go ahead. I'll be quick. Um, so I did go to the Earth Day, um, I don't know, a celebration here at, at my, um, City Hall Park, and there were two bike rides. There was a short one, just uh, I don't think it was three miles or so for families and kids, and then there was an 11 mile bike ride that Tim Borden led through the city, and uh, so I did that with my husband. That was a lot of fun, and there were um, great booths here with, um, you know, our community partners and companies and uh, a lot of interesting information, and it was a really great event. I had never been to it before. Uh, I also attended the Earth Day Festival. I was, it seemed much bigger than the last year. There were more booths and it was very interesting. I really liked the presentations over there. Um, went to the, heard the Teen Commission present uh, the stress, uh, about the stress in the teen's life at the Cupertino High School uh, event. Um, went to mayor's meeting yesterday 
and uh, library commission presented a lot about their circulation over March and April, their book sale coming up. Um, they have actually bringing very good speakers. They have introduced bringing speaker series. So the next one is on May 27th, the ins and outs of digestion. And they're bringing some other South Asian Heart Center speakers. <laughs> so yeah, um, and their book sale is coming up on May 19th. So there were all this kind of information. And if anybody wants to see their circulation statistics, it's here. Uh, there was a interesting the value of Cupertino Library and the number is pretty high. They took all the circulations, the book, and then converted into an actual dollar value. So that was quite impressive number to look at. So I can pass this around if anybody wants to look at. Um, and we'll be going. I will be going to the volunteer fair, and be part of the commission table. Uh, other than that, at the mayor's meeting, the sustainability um, commission presented. The, they were at the Earth Day festival, and they had sponsors. Where the food trucks, uh, Rubio, I think, brought the food truck. They have a speaker series which was very well attended. Um, and the, what, the interesting part I found at Sustainable, they, they promoted um, or they invited students and various uh, teens to do, uh, they had a scholarship or a, um, a project, uh, 250 to $500 worth of, uh, um, God, what, they, they just have a contest kind of thing which will, help uh, bring out ideas to help with sustainability. And they've actually funded three organizations. Um, one was DeVargas School, one was Kennedy School, where they would, um, the students from within the school are brainstorming ideas out how to reduce traffic within their, in their school area, so they have funded them. And the third one was the Ro uh, Rolling Edge uh, organization, where the students actually came to Cherry Blossom Festival and they got funding to educate people and provide little saplings of plants. And they've, I, I was there at Cherry Blossom Festival. They did a great job. So this was a really good way to see the funds being utilized locally within the um, teen community. So that was really good. And I did, I was there for two days at the Cherry Blossom Festival too. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, other than that, there were, um, Oh, another interesting fact came out of Library Commission was that there was a proposal to consolidate Park and Rec Commission and Library Commission, which was news mm -hmm. to me. I hadn't heard oh, of that. And yesterday they had a meeting at Senior Center there uh, to talk about this. And the uh, Library Commission, um, there was a lot of input and they were getting feedback from community if they should be consolidated. Well, like so, they would be brought into our umbrella, maybe, or not sure. That's I was I, I was surprised by that. Uh, okay. uh, Comments, Jeff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's within protocol, ab absolutely. Um, when each year, city council provides a work plan to staff. We work together. We put it together. Um, one of the items is to just look at and investigate the idea of what would what would the commission here, meaning this commission, the Parks and Recreation Commission, look like if it also incorporated library and potentially public safety at the same time? I can't speak for why all of the, you know, why this is, you know, an, an important work item, but it is included in the work program that was adopted. But it starts in, in July, so we'll be starting some just view and looking at it, we one of those tasks will be coming to you and and working independent, you know, individually with you or, in, or collectively. Say what would that look like? What impact mm -hmm. would it be? There's a lot of positives and negatives. I'm sure we can come up with. Um, would would be concerned that maybe library issues would be um, would be um, second chair maybe I, I don't know I don't no. know that's what the library commission's concern or one of them is but um, it's just too early we we don't know yet we haven't even opened that book yet to start start reading but the library commission apparently has yeah they had they I think internally they had a discussion and then they invited the community to 
give feedback. That's why they moved their meeting to a larger space. Yeah. They, they thought they would be getting a lot more people to yeah. comment on that. I, again, the kind of official process and you know we'll, we'll, would begin in the summer at some point. And that's why uh, when this thing hit the work plan, I haven't even discussed it with you. It's just early. Okay. And there was a Fine Arts Commission uh, again mentioned that they would like to collaborate with Park and Rec to promote the art uh, with the, between with the Teen Center, Teen Commission, and Park and Rec Commission. So they're looking for collaboration. And I invited them to come to our meetings and say something. Great. Uh, so I also stopped by, I've been traveling a bunch, but stopped by the uh, Cherry Blossom Festival, which was amazing as always. Um, one of the, and I'm attending the volunteer fair on um, Saturday as well from 11 to 12. If you guys want to just you know, come say hi or <laughs> see what you can volunteer for, always welcome. Oh yeah, you're in Nashville. Um, and uh, what was the other thing? Oh, um, side project. Um, I've also been doing a lot of research on um, environmentally friendly um, innovation for uh, parks and recreation um, building um, structures and even things like the pavement that we use. Um, instead of using traditional tar, there's new technology that actually uses recycled plastic um, to make that. Um, and it lasts longer and it's more effective. Um, so we'll be talking to you about that later. Um, all right, it doesn't look like there is anything else and nobody else has any comments. So uh, I adjourn this meeting at 8.56. All right, before nine. Connor having trouble focusing in school? Having trouble finding Connor's middle school? Would you like directions? No, why is Connor having trouble focusing in